The Battle of Warique saw the forces of Portuguese Prince Afonso Henriques defeat the Almoravid Moors led by Ali ibn Yusuf. Background It was during the Battle of Valdivez against Alfonso VII of Leon that Muslim forces attacked and destroyed Laria and Trancoso. Afonso Henriques's anxiety at this incursion at his southern frontier hastened his negotiations with Alfonso VII of Leon after Valdivez, leading to the Treaty of Zamora and freeing Afonso Henriques's troops to deal with the Muslim attack. Battle. Historians are divided as to the location of this battle. At the time, the name Urique designated a large area south of Behar. Since 12th century chroniclers were unfamiliar with the region where the battle took place, they might have decided to call the location Field of Urique, for lack of a more precise term. Nonetheless, the great distance that separated Uric from the Christian lines farther north has led some historians to suggest various localities in central Portugal, abandoning the traditional idea that the combat occurred in Uric in the Alentejo. It would have been difficult for the then Count of Portugal, with a realm little beyond the Mondego River, to go all the way south to battle five Moorish kings. One plausible alternative is Vila Chada Urique, located some 10 miles from Santarem. However, incursions by Christian armies deep in Muslim territory were not unheard of. Alfonso VII had directed expeditions that had reached Cordoba and Seville, well beyond the limits of Castilian dominions and in 1147 he managed to conquer the Mediterranean port of Almeria, south of Granada. This was possible because the largest Almoravid armies were positioned at the frontier, while armies stationed in small towns would rather retreat into their castles than face a strong enemy force. It is not at all unfeasible that Afonso lead a raid into the Garb, and then, while retreating, was intercepted by sizable Almoravid troops intending to crush his army. Despite the fact that the Christian Portuguese forces were strongly outnumbered, the Muslim armies were weakened by internal leadership problems, which led to Afonso Henriques's victory and subsequently his proclamation as King of the Portuguese, as Afonso I, with the support from his troops vanquishing and slaying, so legend says, five Moorish kings. The earliest accounts provide little detail. In one account the Moorish forces are led by five kings, while in another, the Muslim forces are under the command of one king, Ismar. In the more detailed chronicle of the Goths, Ismar waited until Henriques penetrated into Muslim territory then systematically sent his troops from Seville, Badajoz, Elvis, Ivora and Behar against the Portuguese count. Further, the Portuguese forces were surrounded on the hilltop where they encamped, Isma hosted knights, who were executed later by Henriques, and that the Moorish king escaped in defeat. Arab and Spanish accounts do not clarify the circumstances and confuse the issue, identifying the Ismar as, alternatively, Ismar Abusa Cry or Ismar in Abusa Cry, with later historians identifying Abu Zakaria, the governor of Santarem, as the protagonist. It is also likely that the numbers were inflated by the chroniclers from a large scale raid to grand assault by Muslim forces. Aftermath it was presumed that after his victory over the five Moorish kings, the nobles acclaimed Afonso Henriques as king. In reality, documents after his victory continued to refer to Henriques as prince or infante. Immediately after the battle, Afonso Henriques is said to have called for the first assembly of the Estates General of Portugal at Lamego, where he was given the crown from the Bishop of Braga, to confirm the Portuguese independence from the Kingdom of Leon. This was a patriotic falsification perpetuated by the clergy, nobility and supporters who promoted the restoration of Portuguese sovereignty and the claims of John IV after the Iberian Union. The documents that refer to the Estates General were deciphered by Cistercian monks from the monastery of Alcobaca to perpetuate the myth and justify the legitimacy of the Portuguese crown in the 17th century. The author of this falsification was Oliveira Marques, 
and even in 1632 there were misgivings about the validity of the chronicler's account or the existence of the Cortes of Lamego. The account continued to support the notion that in the 12th century a meeting of the Cortes occurred in the church of Santa Maria de Almacava in Lamego, in 1143. During this meeting, after being acclaimed by a states general, Afonso Henriques accepted a group of laws on royal succession and excluded the Castilian line of kings from the Portuguese throne, made provisions for the nobility, on justice and the independence of Portugal. But, even as Spanish jurists and diplomats later demonstrated that the document was uncreditable, the Portuguese defended the authenticity of the account. Alexandre Herculano later recounted the patriotic reimagining in his Historia de Portugal, which caused its own controversy, and was later perpetuated by the writings of Alfredo Pimenta. In commemoration of the Battle of Warique, the first Portuguese coat of arms appeared that included five small shields to represent the five defeated Moorish kings, which was later challenged by many authors. Legend some years later, the idea of a miraculous intervention in the battle by St. James in favor of the Portuguese appeared in the chronicles of the battle. St. James was widely venerated in Iberia, being generally seen as the Matamuros. As a consequence of Portuguese independence this legend was embellished with time, in order to distance the Portuguese from Spanish devotional practices and beliefs. Later interpretations replaced St. James with St. George and, finally, with Jesus Christ. In the legend, Afonso Henriques is visited before the battle by an old man who saw in a dream that Henriques would be victorious because God would intervene in his favor. He advised the nobleman to leave the encampment alone when he heard the bell of the local chapel. Riding off he was surprised by a ray of light that showed him the sign of the cross and Jesus Christ on a crucifix. Afonso Henriques knelt in its presence and heard the voice of Christ who told him he would defeat the Moors, which he, through courage and his faith, succeeded the following day. The legend of the miracle of the Battle of Warwick served thus as a political instrument to defend Portuguese independence as divine will. Yet, the legend first appeared in the 15th century and was forged by the monks of the Monastery of Santa Cruz. During the battles between John and the Kingdom of Castile, it was in 1419 that the legend first appeared in the Chronica de Portugal and was accepted as fact. Until Alexandre Herculano first re-examined the event, judging it a pious fraud, in his investigation in the middle of the 19th century, 